that. She forced <laughs> them to buy her new clothes. Oh, it wanted a okay. cat too. After the hamster, it wanted a cat, and they yeah. wouldn't get her a cat. A he cat. also got fucking infuriated when they didn't put in every fucking effort possible to arrange a meeting between her and a movie star that she's infatuated yeah, with Spencer. Jeremy, yeah, Spencer. Jeremy Spencer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He got real like, crazy about yeah. that one. That was a real Come long on. obsession for like years. Like, are we serious here, boys? This is ridiculous. <laughs> But it was funny because Jer- I think Jeremy like, Spencer actually corresponded, like would write back and be like, his, or at least his, his publicist, uh, his manager, his publicist, his, did. His, yeah, his, manager his manager or whatever, rap back. It's like, oh, it's very nice that you've taken an interest in me. Like, I feel like, well, you know, right. And then all stuff. of a sudden, you get this like romantic kind of story where, oh no, Donald is actually this fucking long dead fucking prince that's right. obviously in love with her. And you know what I mean? Like, it's all fucking horseshit. It's pretty. Come on. <laughs> She played these poor her poor family like a fucking fiddle. Killed her grandma. Grandma <laughs> Ethel fucking died. All right, like this is this. And of course, she didn't admit to there, fucking doing yeah, this. There are a lot of people who 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 are, would be on the same page as that, and they said that it is it is perhaps due to Donald that she afforded a lifestyle that would be beyond her means. Uh, because She's famous. Well, she was also unemployed for a long period. Like she like to a point like her friends were all making fun of her for like a couple of years. Like she was no, she wasn't employed. Like um, you mentioned the the job at the bank. She got a job at the bank, and then Donald had gone nuts about that and told her to stop working. Um, uh, she'd try like one or two other jobs. Well, and, like, whatever I, Donald says. <laughs> <laughs> yep. pretty much um you know and, and getting the family on board to just have her at home but uh yeah like it's she but she, the, the the fact that she was getting these interviews newspaper articles written about her visitors all of these things um like she was getting money for this like gifts people sending her well, and the attention and the she attention. started suddenly she's in the newspaper why would she quit now it yeah. just starts building and building and building like i so there's something I know, it's, it's, the thing for me is like i'm like i'm just like if you're there, like, I'm just saying, I feel like if I showed up there and I'm like, I'm looking into this thing, it would be very hard for the 15 year old to dupe me and me not be like, it's different time. It's but right? here's the thing. It's, it's a very different time. I, like, I, I, yeah, but I, I you, agree you were allowed Brayden. to strip her naked back then. Right? You know what I mean? So it's like, how is she going to fool you? I, I agree with Brayden well, on the point that it might be difficult for a, a single 15 year old to dupe you, but some of the events that are in here, there's no way she could have done them by herself. Like there's stuff in here. Like if it was a hoax, if it was a hoax, it would have to be like the whole family or at least one or two other people in the family doing these things, which would have been difficult because it's like the, like we said, the mom, well, the, the mom was wheelchair bound. Um, you know, grandma, so she'd be easy to fuck with. I'd imagine. Um, right. You can do stuff behind her back pretty easy. You know, that, the one, the, but the one brother though that they don't made the stepbrother, he's the one that he adamantly he's like, I don't want my fucking name in any of these stories. Right, he's Mark. like, yeah. all all I'll say is the fact that everywhere Shirley goes, this shit happens, and it never happens without her around. So, yeah. She's the one that notices everything. She's the one that found the key. She's the one that finds the letters. She, you know, so it's like it's all centered around this fucking chick. I I don't know. <laughs> Literally nothing bad happens to her. It, it is yeah. it is an it is an interesting case. Like a lot of a lot of paranormal investigators, like big names in the in the field, like around that time, had even some of them had gone in there and been like, I'm not sure if it's a hoax. Something interesting is going on here. Whether it's you know chalk it up to to schizophrenia, uh, chalk it up to uh, even if it is a hoax, well, schizophrenia some kind, be the or whole hysteria. fucking house, like the right. whole family. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm saying. It's something interesting is going on here. We're just not sure what it is. And it, if it's something like she was a paranormal beacon, it's it's definitely something like yeah. If you're getting James Dean and Louis the Seventeenth in the same in the same aura space, like that that is interesting. That yeah. is apparently the house was above a sewer as well, like a big sewer system, and they where they use a lot of rat poison and stuff. So they could true. be getting fucking getting that type there of that. seepage into their water mm-hmm. supply yeah. or something. The one thing that kind of jumped out to me was just her, her, the incident in her bed where the, her entire family was around. Cause that was the one big event where right. like, well, we can't explain that. But all, like some, a lot of times like the, your body can contort in really weird ways and it can look like, like, you know, you arch your back and stuff like that. It's in the middle of the night and they could kind of be like, oh, it looks like she's floating. Like just, just really. her shoulder blades and her yeah. heels are on the bed and the exactly. rest is like there. And you're already on high alert. You're already, you're already thinking that you're paranormally activated. There's something going on. And then you see that, like your mind's going to jump to the craziest yeah, I um, I, I found one of the more interesting things about this case is like just Chibbit's like dedication to the whole case thing. Like he was on this for wait, where years. else was he going to live? He wanted to believe. <laughs> right. Well, he found it like you know people were kind of saying that yeah, this was like this was his 
white whale this was the thing this was the thing that was going to put him on the board as like a paranormal researcher because he was a big fan of all the other guys um and he kind of knew them corresponded with some of them um i think like arthur conan doyle was like on his mailing list but like, that's the thing that's yeah, the thing he's, that's the thing like, if, for if, if that's if that's that's the case right that's the case it's like how does this guy not just deduce right away be like well, this one of the things, maybe he had, yeah. he was a fiction writer. He maybe he had fucking plans to get in writing fiction, right? Like this was, he's going to use this as his muse. His, his pursuit of the, of the identity of this thing is fascinating. Like the way, um, like I said, the, the book I, I read by uh, Shirley Hitchens, the actual, you know, the, the girl who experienced all this and, and uh, James Clark called the Poltergeist Prince of London, the remarkable true story of the Battersea Poltergeist. Um, it lays out the whole thing and his pursuit of like just going through tons of historical accounts and data and correspondence, trying to figure out if Louis the 17th, because back then they weren't sure if Louis the 17th, like the, the second son of um, Louis the, the was it Louis the Louis the seventeenth, sixteenth? Um, had survived. Like there, there was this whole, there was this whole thing for a while where they thought he had escaped the, you know, the purges after the the revolution and, and all of that stuff, and the death of the royalty and all of that. Uh, they they weren't sure if he had actually survived or not. There were accounts saying that, you know, most of the official accounts back then were that he had died, but there was no one hundred percent proof um though we would get a little bit closer to the truth later um due to like genetic testing and stuff that we found the his skull and i don't know what did they use they used his heart (laughs) that they had that's a whole different story but um yeah like him going through there and and like the, the the entity would when corresponding with chibits would give out these little details about like these ships like uh we escaped on a boat called the royal ark and he he contacted like, every single person in france that would have possible no like knowledge of this boat he's like you know contacting everybody every historian every library every record keeping society that he could get his hands on trying to find this ship that to be able to be like yes this is it's Louis the seventeenth, and it would th- and it would throw out details and some stuff that Chibbets would be like, "This is no, there's, there's a very small chance that she would know about this. Like, how did she know about this? Unless, this but that's that's what whatever, like so. ca- that's what captivated him, right? That's why I think that there's some truth to this story is because like this is a guy who would do extensive research and then he would like look into these things and he'd be like how the fuck would she know this like but he's also got a massive desire for this to be real true yeah so but he but he was he did he did did take a lot of liberties and some of the interpretations of the things that he did i would like looking back on his notes and stuff and it would be like his notes his notes compared to the book you read vastly different (laughs) like no, I could tell. Like me and Braden definitely went through his notes, like the yeah. pod, uh, the podcast and everything like that, as opposed to your notes, because like, oh, the, there's a tapping, and I'm like, oh, motherfucker! Well, I read that there was a fucking banging so loud that you know the <laughs> entire neighborhood could find, right? Like, so there's there is a big difference between what this guy wrote and yeah, he he what the, he definitely uh, sensationalized it a little bit, as he would, as, as he would. He, he's part of the fucking. Writers Guild, the fucking spooky, booky, fucking geisty yeah, bullshit. That's, that's, we it, talked about that's it. That's spooky, it. That's the title. Spooky, booky, goosey, loosey. Anyway. <laughs> Basically. Wrap it yep. up. So, I don't know. Better see Poltergeist. Interesting. Yeah. So, I there's guess you guys... Whole, there's whole podcasts dedicated to this case. Mm-hmm. Like, an entire great. series of them. Horror yeah. podcast. No, it's great. I, I, the audio drama is awesome. Oh, I highly recommend it. It's great. It. It's phenomenal. Great. Super enjoyed it. It's uh, it, it, it's interesting though because I like I said listening to this one and what we in the other you know cases of poltergeist we've talked about it does make me think that uh, if these things are real, um, the real I think I my personal thoughts on them is that I think we all encounter them at some point in our lives. The difference is is we just don't give them. Uh, you know the attention or the what fuels them to grow right it's like they come they fuck with you 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 just kind of pass it off as oh i don't know why this happened and you move on right and so do they right so but guys looking- might be, may be real may not be real but you know what really is the realest of real our patreon supporters yeah. boom the realest I like it. the realest of the real they actually exist or they're bots that pay us money one of the two <laughs> Either or, it's either, way we <laughs> either hell, either way, we love them. <laughs> this week's newest supporters: we have Dimitri, Carol M. Velasquez, 
Ryan Morse. Brian Ince? Ince? You be the judge. Tyler Gillum. Marcus Fafield. And a nice little bump from Grim Knight Productions. I don't know what they're producing, but they're producing something. Mm. Check them out. We support it. We support it. We support it. All right. That, that was fun. <laughs> and as we always say at the end of these things, keep those eyes on the sky. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you wanna watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys. Enjoy the next video.